fasting, I think like I can't have anything, but are you saying I can have coffee? What am I allowed during this fasting period? Well, let, let's talk about course, plain water. Yes. Nothing added to it. No flavors. You know, plain sparkling water is also fine. But, you know, people sometimes say, well, how come I can have black coffee and plain tea? Because those have flavors. Well, they do have flavors, but they have a bitter flavor profile. And a bitter flavor profile is not associated with a cephalic phase insulin response. So, you know, the black coffee is is actually stimulating autophagy. We have not used the word autophagy yet, but autophagy is our body's powerful cellular housekeeping. It's like recycling and upcycling where our bodies during the fast can go in and clear up old junky proteins and really clean up things. Also, it's great for our immune systems. They can really function best during the fasted state. Um, and black coffee is likely to stimulate those processes. It even you know helps with fat burning. And so black coffee is a great thing to add into your fast. Now, if you find that black coffee makes you hungrier, if, if you don't want to have the coffee, you're not required to have the coffee. You can just stick to water if you want. But Black coffee does tend to stimulate the things we want to have going on during the fast. And, and Tim, any, any thoughts on that? I remember we had a lot of debate when we were doing our big um, Zoe Predict studies about whether or not you can have teas and coffees during during fasted periods. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no one knows absolutely for sure because the tests haven't been done. So this we're just getting an sort of expert consensus on this, really. But most people do believe. Uh, in the fasting world that, yes, uh, black teas, green teas, uh, coffees, uh, water are are perfectly fine. Where people start to disagree is, can I have just a drop of, you know, a macchiato in my in my coffee, just that tiniest little drop? And, and some people say, you know, if it's if it's less than uh, equivalent of I don't know, 10 or 20 calories, it's probably OK. Your body probably won't be able to sense that as a meal and therefore break its fast. Other people, I think like gin, would probably say uh, that avoid that. That could be, you know, counterproductive and you actually lose all your benefits. Uh, I don't think we quite know yet. Uh, it may be that gin's actually tried it herself and uh, seen any difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a whole section in Fast, Feast, Repeat where I talk about the clean fast. And there is at the end of, of that, the, there are two chapters about the clean fast. And there's a section where I have, you know, anecdotal stories from from intermittent fasters. And, you know, I've been in the intermittent fasting community since well before I ever wrote any books at all or had podcasts um, really in you know, 2014, 2015, started with the, the support groups on Facebook. And anecdotally, it the difference between fasting clean and, you know, putting a little bit of this, a little bit of that, the bulletproof coffee, a little bit of butter, you know, all the things that people might be, you know, putting in there, the difference is night and day. And you have to really experience it for yourself. So anybody who's putting in a little sweetener or a little drop of cream or whatever, and you're like, it's fine, it works for me, I'm still losing weight, I feel okay. I would challenge you to try it with the clean fast. Give yourself 30 days. I call it the clean fast challenge. Go to plain black coffee, plain tea, plain water, nothing flavored, nothing sweetener, nothing sweetened, nothing to lighten up your coffee. I've never had anybody try it for 30 days and then go back to the other way. So, you know, it really you just take that challenge and try it for yourself and see. Most people report that they can't believe the difference that it makes. So this is another example where what you're saying is, you know, anecdotally seeing this in practice, yeah. this is a model that works. You know, whatever the mechanism is, you know, whatever's going on behind the scenes, you know, I can give you the theory as to what I think why it's easier without all that, you know, based on what what we do know here are the theories. But in practice, you'll just see you're not white knuckling it. You're not hangry. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I really can fast till three o'clock and I feel great. Whereas before when you were having that little bit of almond milk or a little bit of cream or the butter or the MCT oil or whatever, the, you know, that you saw a YouTube video that said it was okay, you leave that out and you're like, wow, the whole experience is different. This is all back to, this is just very new and not very well studied. So, so Jin, just to play back to like somebody listening, trying to do this. So I need to go to a clean fast when I'm fasting, I need to only have like this water and tea and coffee. Do I immediately go to like some constrained period on day one and stick with it? Help me to understand what else I do in this 28 days. That's a great question. And 
we have in, in Fast Feast Repeat, in the 28-Day Fast Start chapter, there are three different plans you can kind of choose from that are helping you adapt. You know, you might need to be someone who really eases in and start slow. You know, I'm not suggesting anyone start with what I'm doing <laughs> as, as like day one. You know, you've really got to build up to it. I like to compare it to couch to 5K. You know, if someone wants to go run a 5K, you don't get off the couch on day one and run a 5K. You have to build up to it. And so fasting is the same way. We're very much building up our fasting, quote, muscle, right? It's not technically a muscle, but you know what I mean with that analogy. So you're building up to it. And that's what the, you know, the 28 days is really for. You know, you're, you're learning how to fast clean. There are going to be days where you feel hangry and you have to open your window earlier than you expected. And that's not a fail. That's just part of the process. We're learning to listen to our bodies. You know, we never want to feel shaky, like you're having a blood sugar crash. If you're ever shaky or nauseous, go ahead and eat. You know, forget about what the plan said to do that day. Go ahead and eat. And, you know, gradually as your body gets adapted, you'll find, you know, what feels good to you. Some people always feel better with a midday eating window. For example, they like to you know, skip breakfast, eat lunch, have a little maybe early kind of dinner, close their window, no couch snacking on chocolate for them because their window is closed, but they just, they sleep better when they have that middle of the day eating window. I'm not one of those people. I actually sleep better when my window is closer to bedtime. I've tried it all different ways. I wait till afternoon, open my window, eat till I'm satisfied, close my window. But only through experimentation have I learned that. You're not going to learn that in the first 28 days. It's very much a process. And your goal is to think of intermittent fasting as a lifestyle. You know, I interviewed a longevity expert um, for intermittent fasting stories, um, Dr. Gil Blander. He um, has a company now that does some things with biomarkers, but he he has studied um, longevity in general. And he said to me, this was a couple of years ago, but he said he believes that one of the most powerful things we can do to increase longevity is intermittent fasting. You know, just have that piece in there. Understand, you know, why we're doing it. I don't want anybody to start intermittent fasting only because you might lose some weight. That, that's not what intermittent fasting really is, is all about. You know, of course, I came to it for the weight loss. I like to say, you know, we come for the weight loss, but we stick around for the health benefits. You just have to experience it to see what we're talking about. Amazing. And Tim, can you tell us a bit about like that value of that window length? Because you could say, hey, just it, uh, lots of people are eating for 18 hours a day today because of the way that the world works. And what really matters is just to shrink that to 12 which is still like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., right? That's pretty different from, you know, shrinking it to much shorter periods to it. I think that I've heard you, Tim, talk a bit about some of those, perhaps the microbiome having at least part of the, the answer to that story. 